I just want to show you quickly where we live because I think that that puts values on the line. Um, we live across the water, no roads as I said. We live down in the bottom right hand corner if you can see it. We leave our cars right over the other side and uh, it's called by the locals Church Point Spares. Sometimes you get there and there's no wheels. <laughs> you know, early drawings for things, that's why I found the drawings of John Scott, those early drawings where he had Polynesian crossed out and he had the pyramid form and he had the marae, uh, and then he had the, the, uh, the hip form. It's those early drawings that are really important. This drawing shows the plan down the bottom in the, in the bay that it's in, and it turns into elevation and section. This is the idea for the house, like underlying every hopefully good work is a clear idea. Our house is a simple, very simple building. It's the same size I discovered in the museum at, uh, where was it that we stopped off? At, at oh. yeah, anyway, but about Palace, Pal Palace Bay, Palace, Palace Bay, Palace Bay, where the first, they found the remains of the first Ma Maori house. It was exactly the same size as our house. It was 4.6 metres by, um, by uh, 6.9 metres. And I thought, oh, yeah, anyway, uh, interesting. So, but, but listen, we have just a big roof that overhangs and a platform. Yeah, 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 out of time. And we have walls, it's all made of plywood and, and recycled hardwood from, taken from old buildings and reused. Um, it's tiny uh, and it's a modern building. It is a flat pack building. If you wanted to, you could undo the whole building, flat pack it, and with the exception of some of the footings, you could take it away and put it up somewhere else. Why, why aren't we doing that with everything that we're making? You know, good material is priceless. You know, bulldozers, pinch bars, sledgehammers are not the way to make changes to buildings. Pull them apart, reuse what you can, and so forth is, I believe, a, a sensible way to go. You have your earthquakes. We have our problems as well. Um, fires, 11 houses went in our neighbourhood. Our place went at different times. Um, and one has to rebuild. So we rebuilt our, we rebuilt our house. Now, I don't know if you can read that. Is that readable now? That's the plan of our little house. One room, we've bu built some other bits and pieces for the kids and Karen has a little studio at the back which is made from all the off cuts that were lying around the site and it's probably the best building there, I suspect. Uh, but that's how we live. There's one room, there's an old fireplace, there's a kitchen on the outside part of the veranda, there's a bath up at the top, you see, with the, with the fireplace and walls made of plywood would have the storage in them. Not enough storage, never enough. And that's its section. It has big roofs that overhang like bird's wings with no veranda posts. That means that when you sit, the whole line of the landscape is unimpeded. It's, it's important for us. And that's how we work. That's a 1 to 20 model of that building with every stick of timber in it. And the builder, Jeffrey, that fellow I showed you, had just a simple foundation plan and we took it from there. And then if you look at the other panels that are above, see those white panels? There's drawings on there full size of the details of the roof, just like you build a boat. That's how we worked on that. That's how we made it. Um, no engineer in this case, just me because when you've been handling materials and boats and things for a long time, you always start with the lightest thing first because that's the fastest, and when it breaks, you beef it up. So you start from the other end when you're working with racing machines and boats. It's a good way to begin. These are cantilevered plywood brackets, and when I swung on the end of that, it may be five mil deflection. 
very strong and very light. All our material has to be carried in, carried up. If you buy an egg at the shop or at the, um, you have to handle it six times before it goes in the pan over there. Nothing can be delivered easily, so everything has to be light. And that's how we live. Big overhanging roof, stepping down systems in our floors so as that becomes the furniture. We live outside most of the time or on the edge of it. The bath is there right in the middle of the deck. Wash house over there in the end is the most important building. That's got washing machine, spare kitchen sink, place where I can sharpen tools, uh, double headed shower, fridge, toilet, storage, clothes hanging, a whole lot of stuff. You take it out of the machine, you hang it straight under the roof, you can see the stuff there, and that's it. It works. It, we should market that building. That's a good little building. <laughs> I wanted to say to, to Tony from Dulux, is he still here? Hi, Tony. I have put on so many coats of Dulux in my life on racing boats, Dulux clear and enamels. First of all, immaculate preparation, like all things have to be. Everything is about preparation, is it not? Getting things right before you actually do the final job, how you set it up, and then wet it, wetting the floor so there's no dust, making sure the brushes are beautifully clean, stripping yourself off so there's no dust in your clothes, and then laying on the final coat of enamel. <laughs> I should do an advertisement for you. 